Welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test and I'm going to record this for marking and clerical purposes. The speaking has three parts. I will give you instructions for each. May I see your identification? Please just show it to me. Yes, of course. Here is my passport. Please take a look. Thank you. And what is your full name? My first name is Elena and my surname is Makarenko. Please call me Elena. Okay, Elena. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. What do you do to relax? To let loose, I like to hang out with my friends or watch a movie. Or if I am low on energy, I just chill at home and read a book. When do you meet with friends or family? Usually I meet up with my friends and family in the evenings once I am done with my work and study, usually between 6 and 9 p.m. Uh, or on the weekends. Just like this last Saturday, we had a very pleasant dinner at my parents' house. Let's talk about your hobbies. What is your favorite hobby? My favorite pastime activity is playing the piano. I've been playing the piano since I'm 10 and I really enjoy it. When do you usually do your hobby? I usually practice a bit from half an hour to an hour in the evenings and also on the weekends and I also play on some special occasions like birthdays. Who do you talk with uh, about your hobbies? My friend Ruslana is also an avid pianist so I both talk about playing piano with her and we play together. I also had many discussions with my previous uh, piano teachers as well as with my parents and I even chat online uh, through forums and blogs with others about playing the piano. Have your hobbies changed over the years? Uh, well, playing the piano hasn't changed but some of my others have. I used to dance but I'm not really into it uh, these days and I used to love rom-coms but nowadays I've been more into dramas and documentaries. If you could choose a new hobby, what would it be? Uh, honestly, <laughs> I haven't given that much thought. But come to think of it, I've been interested in doing some photography. So perhaps if I have some time, I will give that a shot. That's the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two. For part two, I will give you a card with some questions. You will have one minute to look at the questions, think about your answers. Uh, and you have some note paper there in your pen uh, beside you, so you can take notes in the one minute if you wish. I will tell you when to start and when to stop. Please do not touch the card. Talk about a new skill you would like to learn. Your one minute preparation time begins now. Olina, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. I have often thought about learning to sing. As we have been discussing, I play the piano, so it would be great to also think as well, as in this way I would be a more rounded artist and a better performer. Learning to sing professionally means that I would need to develop my vocal range as well as control my pitch and volume and have a unique style. Becoming a professional vocalist takes a lot of effort and time and I would really need to practice a lot and commit to it. There are lots of places where I can look uh, for the help to develop my singing voice. Definitely hiring an expert voice teacher to help me from two to three times a week is important. There are lots of books and videos online that give great tips on the improving the skills of singing, but without the professional feedback from the voice teacher, the progress would be really slow. My former piano teacher, Edward, uh, knows few reputable voice teachers, so I would just ask him for the suggestion. And after learning to sing, I would start to do more performances even for a small audience like at jazz club or music halls. And I would also write and record my songs. I think that this can be a very fun way to uh, spend my, some of my spare time in the future years. And 
this can make me happy and maybe, just maybe, even rich and famous. Okay, um, your time is up. Please uh, turn over the note paper, uh, put it to the side, as well as the pencil. And we'll take back the card. And now we will continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you some more questions connected to the, uh, to the topic of part two, and uh, maybe a question or two related to your response. What types of songs are you likely to sing if you pick up this skill? I would most probably pick up jazz and play jazz as like Billie Holiday as I really enjoy playing jazz on the piano. Let's talk about life skills. What are some skills that parents should teach their children to be successful in life? I think that moms and dads both play a key role in social skills what are needed for everyday life, like problem solving, communication and positive thinking. I can say that my parents have instilled all of this throughout my upbringing. What skills should schools teach to students to guarantee their success in life? Educational institutions are responsible for the tech skills like writing and reading that are needed for employment and financial success in life. Again, I can say that I've been lucky to have had good school in all my life. How have the skills required for daily life changed since a generation ago? Mm, that's a really interesting question. I think they have changed, especially in the past 30 to 40 years. Uh, like people nowadays really need to be tech savvy uh, while using their thumbs to type quickly or using mobile applications. I mean, people really didn't need to be as competent in this when my parents were young adults. Where can people learn advanced skills which are highly demanded by society? The best place is to learn professional skills needed by people like big businesses is definitely at university, uh, especially in graduate and postgraduate programs. Can you elaborate on this? Yes, sure. Becoming a data analyst or a neuroscientist is definitely in high demand these days. And these skills and accreditations can be received only in distinguished university programs like National Technical University of Ukraine or Cambridge in England. Let's talk about setting goals. Why is it important to set goals in life? I think it's vital to have life goals. People need such goals to be motivated to achieve and be productive. I think that purpose gives meaning to life and it's also the foundation for happiness and development. What are the best ways to set these goals so that people can remember them? Well, the best way to set up targets is by having a clear plan as well as a deadline. It's important to be realistic and work towards the finish every day, just like I did with this IELTS exam. So I set up this date around three months ago and I've been working every day on my study plan so that I can improve my English and communication and get the better scores. Hopefully it works. Why are some people not able to achieve the goals that they set for themselves? I think that certain individuals aren't able to attain their ambition is because they are either unrealistic like becoming a millionaire overnight or they aren't persistent enough and give up along the way. What can they do to change this? They can follow some advices that I had mentioned in my previous responses, like set up realistic goals, have clear plan, as well as a deadline. It's also important to stay the course and see each step through. That is the end of part three. That concludes the speaking portion of the exam. You will have your mark in a few days time online and you will have your certificate in uh, a week or two with the other sections. Have a great rest of your day. Remember to take your passport with you. Thank you. Thank Have you. Bye-bye. Nice Bye. Thanks.